Just before we get into this video guys, if you want to follow me on social media, on Twitter and Instagram, the links are here. And if you also want to support me on Patreon as well and help out my channel, that would be absolutely awesome as well. But, let's get on with the video. Hello everyone, and welcome back to a brand new episode of Ranking Doctor Who. So in this episode, we're looking at Sonic Screwdrivers. Now this was actually a Patreon suggestion by Shane Kerr. So thank you very much for your suggestion. Obviously, I have mentioned in previous videos before, like if you want to follow me on Patreon then on there typically what I do is I will take video suggestions from you guys it does take a while for me to actually do them because of other videos that I've got planned and that I'm doing but I will get around to it eventually also on Patreon what I do is individual reviews of Doctor Who stories so there's quite a few classic stories there's a few new series stories it's not just stories that I like either stories that I openly hate not hellbent probably not hellbent but I mean, I'll go on about that enough. But yeah, so that's basically the gist of what you get on Patreon. It is essentially like my second channel, and you guys have a little bit of input into my channel as well. So I'm not forcing you, but I'm just saying that's what the crack is. So there you go. But yes, the Doctor's Sonic Screwdriver. Now, I'm not including River Sonic on this because essentially it is just a mini version of the 9th and 10th Doctor's Screwdrivers. I know it's slightly different, but it's not that different. I'm not really going to include any other Sonic devices, so like Sonic Pen... Sonic Kane, any of that sort of stuff, because it's purely just the Doctor's most trusty device after the TARDIS. So, my least favourite Sonic screwdriver, I have got to say, is the second Doctor's, which, unfortunately, is actually the original Sonic screwdriver. Now, I can't remember exactly how many episodes this actually appeared in, but from what I remember, it's not a common thing. It particularly like if you're used to the new series like it's not whipped out every five seconds. It's also used for the most sort of simplest of tasks. It's, it's probably the most simple in terms of design and in its actual uses. The reason why it's my least favourite is because it is essentially just a stick with a light on the end. Like it is a really dull design. I think later designs make it look more like a tool, make it look more related to a particular Doctor or a particular TARDIS. And I like that approach a lot better. This one is just really dull, a bit boring. I mean, a lot of people forget that there actually was a sonic screwdriver in Patrick Troughton's era. So for those reasons, yeah, it's my least favourite. Now, this is going to sound really weird, but my second least favourite, or the next one on this list, is Peter Capaldi's sonic screwdriver. So... Not the one that he inherited from Matt, but the one that he got at the end of Hellbent and then used throughout series 10. The reason why is because it's the exact opposite of the other one. It is so over-designed to shit. Like, this thing is hideous to look at. I like the fact that it's TARDIS blue. Really, the only thing about it that I can say I genuinely like. This thing is a fucking toy. Like, that is all it is. It's just a big over-designed stick with a light on the end that makes sound. This was purely designed to sell toys, and look, if that's what you're gonna do, then fine. But at least make it look like a device. Make it look like a tool that the Doctor could actually use. It's just, it's so over the top, and it's so in your face. It's like somebody just drew a basic design of a sonic screwdriver, and then just kept going, and then went a bit more, and then kept going a bit rubbed a bit out, and then went even fucking further. And speaking of Capaldi's era, um, technically it's not a screwdriver, so the Sonic shades are not going to be on this list. However, fuck the Sonic sunglasses, because they're fucking awful. So, the next Sonic screwdriver on this list, I am going to go with... I'm torn between two. Okay, yeah, sod it. I'm going to go with Jodie Whittaker's Sonic screwdriver. Now, for the most part, I actually like this design. I think... Part of it looks a bit questionable. And look, I know people have made that joke. And I know a lot of people say, oh, it's just sexist people who are saying that. And of course, they're going to read into it too much. But a part of it does look a bit like a penis. And I can't really unsee it. I think it's the way that it's curved. It's just, it's really bizarre. But apart from that, I like this design. It's very simple. It's very practical. Obviously, the curve in it does look a bit suspicious. However, it's also easy for the Doctor to hold in a hand. The reason why I put it here is because I don't like the fact that it's a Sonic screwdriver that the Doctor just went and made in a shed. I like the idea that the Sonic is Gallifreyan technology. It's something that us humans don't have. And even though it is to a Time Lord such a simplistic tool, to a human it's this incredible piece of technology and I think when you create it in some random fucking shed in the northeast of England it's just a bit underwhelming. The design itself is fine, I don't have an issue with the design as such apart from the phallic references that I mentioned before and I think as well because it was so overused 
in Series 11. I'm kind of sick of the sight of it. So, for those reasons, yeah. But it's not a bad Sonic. I don't hate it. I don't despise it. It's just an average Sonic screwdriver. Next, we're going with the 9th and 10th Doctor Sonic screwdriver. Now, this one shares a couple of things with other screwdrivers, you know, like with the Capaldi one, it's clearly part of the 9th and 10th Doctor's TARDIS. It's very organic looking. It looks like a simplistic tool in the same way that Jodie Whittaker's Sonic Screwdriver does. So I suppose the reason why I put this one ahead, and really this one could have gone either way, the reason why this one is ahead is probably because I grew up with this one. And it's also, if you bear with me, I say bear with me, but I'm editing this anyway. Like, I'm gonna cut this bit out. It's also the first one that I owned, so I like it. I, I do have a soft spot for it. And like I say, this was at a time when the Sonic wasn't really a crucial part to the Doctor. It was sort of used as a tool. It wasn't really overused like sort of Moffat era onwards Sonic screwdrivers. So yeah, not a not a phenomenal design, not absolutely incredible, but it's it's good enough and it's nostalgic enough. So yeah, I'll put this one here, but like I say, you can flip this with Jodie's and I wouldn't really argue with you, to be honest. Next then, we are going with the War Doctor's Sonic Screwdriver. Now, what I really love about the War Doctor's one is the fact that it's very much a gap between the classic series and the new series, in the same way that John Hurt's Doctor is also the same. The base of it very much looks like the classic series Sonic Screwdriver. However, it does have the red light at the end, which is a reference to you know, most of the Sonics in the new series having some sort of coloured light at the top of it. I like that. I like the fact that it bridges the gap. And I love the War Doctor's attitude towards it as well, because it's just, you know, why are you pointing your Sonic screwdrivers at them? They're technological devices, not water pistols. I don't know. I think because it is a nice blend of the old and the new, I just, I really like it. It's not a standout one. It's not one that I'm overly attached to. But like I say, the little references to old and new who and sort of the in-between... I just like that and I like that design approach. So the penultimate one then, which might surprise some people, seeing as some people might be thinking, but hang on a minute, lots of doctors have multiple different versions of screwdrivers. But anyway, getting to the point, I'll get to that. This next one is going to be Matt Smith's. Now, yes, I did mention that Jodie Whittaker overuses her sonic screwdriver. However, Matt Smith, fucking hell, he really overuses this fucking thing as well. But what I really like about this sonic is its design plain and simply like yes you could make the whole toy argument with this one as well especially with the weird grabber hooks that come out of it at the same time though in the show it does look like a tool it does look like something the doctor would use i mean you see matt smith's doctor reading like data off of it and doing analytical checks with it i mean the stupid shit like oh there's an app for it and it's like what do you mean there's an app for it it's a sonic fucking screwdriver but for me i think this is the best new series redesign feels like something the new series would do obviously because it did it but you know what i mean it feels like a nice updated version of the sonic whilst still being a tool while still being a scientific piece of equipment i like the green on it i like the fact that this one has more uses than previous ones like i say where the doctor you know checks readings and stuff on it and as series five is my favorite series of the new series then i'll always have nostalgia for this one as well maybe even more so than the Eccleston Tenant one. So, in first place then, you probably know which one it is. However, it is... Oh, whoa, I did that first time. That's fucking boss. Some people are going to say, but what about the fifth Doctor's one? What about the eighth Doctor's one? What about the third Doctor's one? This is technically the fourth Doctor's one. However, when you look at them all, it's so little difference between all of them that they're basically the same. They're basically the same shape. They're basically the same design. John Pertwee's literally just has a bit of yellow on that section. Peter Davison's is a bit gold up here and Paul McGann's is like silver instead and you know red bits and whatnot. They are essentially the same. So whilst I do accept that there are subtle differences and you could make a list of them being included separately, to me they're all the fucking same essentially. It's like saying when I did my ranking of the Doctor's costumes, it's like going through each and every single fucking variant of the Doctor's costume. Like, we get the gist. Like, Tennant wears suits and trainers. Tom wears a scarf. Do you know what I mean? Obviously, there are variants there, but they're essentially overall the same type of thing. But yes, moving past that, we have this Sonic. Now, obviously, the one that I have here is Tom's, and the reason why I love it so much is probably because it's Tom's. I don't think anybody is surprised by that. This one isn't overused. 
in the classic series. I love how the Doctor just sort of pulls it out of his pocket every now and again. I love that it's not just a simple case of you have a, a stick with a light on the end and you point it and it goes blurp and you know it lights up and it's all fancy. I like the fact that it does look alien. It does look like this weird alien tool and you know you don't activate it by pushing a button you pull it down. That's just really interesting and different. I, I mean, there's a certain scene in The Sea Devils where the third Doctor detonates minds with it. Some people are gonna fucking moan at me saying that I'm, I'm holding it round the wrong way, but I hold it that way and I don't give a fuck either way. I, If you watch throughout the show, it's inconsistent. Sometimes they hold it that way, other times they hold it that way. Doesn't fucking matter. But yes, this is the most alien to me. Well, I suppose you could argue that Capaldi's is, but that's just an over-designed piece of shit. Whereas this one is nicely designed, looks alien, is practical, is essentially just a tool and nothing more. It's not used as like a plot device, it's just there when the Doctor needs it. I don't know, I, I just love it. It's simplistic, yet it's effective. I always say this when it comes to Doctor Who, a lot of the time, less is more. This is one of the prime examples of that. I just love it. It's great. So those are my rankings of the Sonic Screwdrivers. Now, thank you again to Shane Kerr for suggesting this video. But in the comments below, guys, let me know what you think. What are your favourite Sonic Screwdrivers? Instead of, like, ranking them yourselves, tell me what your favourite one is and what your least favourite is. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like on it. Subscribe for more. Social media links and Patreon, as always, is in the description below. So if you would follow me on any of those things, then I would absolutely love you forever. But until next time, guys, you take Take care of yourselves. Goodbye.